this morning I've been doing a little bit of exploring in the back acres of our property. Got about five acres back here that are just grassland. And it's, it's turned out to be quite beautiful. Uh, we've just left it alone. We haven't had any animals to graze it, which is unfortunate. But uh, it's for good reason. We've got to focus on making money so we can finish up the, uh, the house and just in general uh, reestablish the strength of my career in art. But it's nice to be able to come out here after not having done anything to take care of it and to find that not only is all is all well for the most part, but um but that it's beautiful. I don't know if you can tell how uh, how tall this grass is. Let me turn it around for a second. Hello. <laughs> I'm sure most of you have probably seen grass this high, but to me it's, it just feels like something that it doesn't happen. You don't see as often these days. I think the fact that it was heavily grazed for a few years has helped, helped it be healthy. This is really fun for me. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of just being a kid when I used to explore. I only grew up on one acre, but it was in a similar place as this. I'm probably going to trip. <laughs> this is really tall grass and it's getting tangled. My, my feet are getting tangled in it a little bit. Oh, this is sad. Um, on old properties like this, there's a lot of history. Some of it, a lot of history, not all of it is good. It looks like there was an old camper trailer that uh, someone just dumped here, which um, which is kind of dumb and a mess, but all the um, all the rotting wood and and stuff has has made for nice mulch, basically, for these two trees. And I hadn't checked this for a while. Oh, it got dark, didn't it? Not sure why my camera's doing that, but um. You can see that this tree is now now dead. Looks like it was knocked over by the windstorm that uh, also recently took down a really, really large um, quadrant of that tree. Um, that's, that's too bad, but luckily the, the majority of that tree survived, um, as did one of ours. It's strange that that one would, would fail and that one wouldn't, but um, I guess that's what windstorms are for, for culling out the weak trees so that the strong ones survive and, and make more seeds. Speaking of seeds, um, you can see that we've got these, they're actually kind of pretty, but um, these thistle plants, these purple parts actually smell really, really good. I think they're beautiful flowers, actually, and they're they're um, they're kind of revered in Scotland. <laughs> Got kind of a cool history there. They kept out some bad guys, um, but on my my property, I don't want them. Well, I I don't know. I don't mind them so much, but um, they actually do spread pretty wild, and they can sort of. Decimate an area. Sorry, it's so shaky. Hold up my other hand. I can sort of render an area pretty, pretty unusable, and uh, and also it happens to be illegal to allow them to grow in our county, and I think throughout the state, and probably in most states, they're considered considered a noxious weed. Um, so I came up with a solution. Actually, it was kind of, the solution was, <laughs> I 
handed to me um, by way of an accidental um, thing that happened. So the kids were wanting to set up a, a slip and slide on the grass. And so we took this piece of clear plastic and set it on the grass and set the sprinkler on it. And we knew that, you know, chances of burning the grass were pretty high on a hot day like that. But we thought that the, you know, a couple hours wouldn't be bad. Anyway, we, after using the sprinkler for, and it ended up being about four hours, but the water was on it. Anyway, we took it up and uh, afterwards the grass was just dead. I mean, it's like really dead. I hope it comes back, but, um, but uh, basically we, we, we turned it into a greenhouse. So I've uh, taken in as many of these, these weeds as possible. And I've made this greenhouse around them. I've tried to seal down the edges as well as I could with some bricks. And uh, it quickly, quickly heats up in there. Um, I just put my head under there for a minute um, right after I had sealed the edges and it was already 120 degrees or so just after a couple minutes. So I'm hoping that it gets high enough to actually kill the, the weed seeds, seed heads. Of course, it'll kill the grass too, but I've got no problem with that. I've got so much grass here. Um, <laughs> honestly, I think they're really pretty when they're kind of sparse like this, but um, anyway, we will see. I'm going to do that for a day or maybe two, and uh, our, our high temperature, whoops, the past few days has been up around 96, 97, and that pretty much represents the, the highest that we'll get around here in a typical summer, um, but we're we're in the height of it now. We might hit one, one or two days that are around 100 in August, but um, typically we only see one uh, really hot spell during the year. We'll see. Anyway, I'm using it to my advantage. Regardless of what happens, we can use it to our advantage. There are benefits to sunshine, there are benefits to rainy weather. Uh, you know, as long as we can see the see the usefulness of it. Look past the, oh cool, look past the the negative side of things and see, whoa, <laughs> told you I might trip. <laughs> I was trying to cross a, a non-electrified wire. Since we don't have any animals, we don't have to keep them electrified. Anyway, here's what I just discovered. So just uh, on the slightly closer area here, closer to the house, I mean. There's a tree that's growing. I'm gonna go check it out. There's a, looks like animals have been making their homes here or sleeping here, possibly. This stuff is nasty, this grass. These grass heads dry out and, ugh, they get stuck in your socks, they're horrible. But, they're kind of pretty too. Like if I were to paint this, it would, it would be a, be more in, a more interesting painting to have this this shape and this color um, break up the the big field of the big expanse of green, as would these those little red stalked things, uh, wild amaranth. So that's cool. So this is the same kind of tree as these ones, that, the one that just died over there. Actually, that tree over there might do better now that the, its companion is, is dead. Kind of sad for it, poor tree. But um, that's so cool. We haven't taken care of this at all as far as like, we haven't watered it or mowed it or grazed it. And this tree is springing up, which I think is cool because that means it's adapted itself to this to this area, to this soil, to this climate, without any help on our part. We didn't, didn't mulch it even. Hey, buddy boy. It's Alex. Yep, you can. He wants to use my oil paint.
Yeah, that's fine, buddy. What'd you say? What'd you say? Oh, cool. Okay. Oh, this is gonna paint an oil painting. That's, that's awesome. Here's the old boat, boat shell, shell that's been on our property for ages. And it's uh, <laughs> a festering uh, mosquito um, <laughs> incubator right now. But, uh, well, actually it's not because I put a mosquito dunk tablet in there. I'm sure it's due for another one though. So good and bad things about the property. Some of it's kind of ugly. I can't wait to set a match to that, but this time of year that would be kind of dangerous. So I don't know. I'll just leave it. Been slowly over the course of the past few weeks and spreading out this pile of um, gravel. I'm just gonna go around the house. Oh, it's so ugly. Whatever. We'll eventually use this stuff. Stuck over the house. I say eventually. I'm not. I'm in no hurry at all. I mean, it'd be nice, but. But, uh, hey kitty. Be nice to get it done sooner than later. But the priority is just making sure that we can save up money to, to be able to do it all without going into debt. <laughs> Here's our garden. We've let the, the weeds create kind of a cover crop. Well, yeah, I, I wouldn't call it a crop, but you know, create a ground cover. And uh, we just keep them mowed down in the aisles. And it seems like it does a better job of keeping the soil moist than, than if we were to uh, burn the weeds off with that plastic or if we were to um, till. Of course, if we tilled, it would, it would put the the weeds down in the soil and they would they would have a mulching effect but anyway this seems to work quite well I've got little plants peppers kind of dotted in between areas here some sunflowers that's a weed that's a look like maple trees I'm so proud of these little maples that we started from seed. So proud of them. They're doing a good job. More maples here. The trees do so much better when we have this bark around them. I think the thicker we can go, the better. I need to get some more around us. Make it like a foot thick and maybe three or four feet radius you know, all around. And things are progressing and doing well. It's so gratifying to, to have a garden, to see the plants do well. And all we have to do is, well, sometimes nothing really. And it's just kind of magical, sort of a miracle. I say sort of, it's really a miracle. It's neat that we get to participate in that, you know, creation in, in a way with these plants. Or at least, at least help them along. Apricot trees. A lot of grass. A lot of grass that's uh, in one frame of thought it could be said that it's out of control. On the other hand it's really pretty. doesn't work nearly as well. It works. 
as you can see, it's, it's worked quite well in this area, but we've had to have it there for, for about a month, whereas the, the clear plastic uh, works a lot better. You would think the blast like plastic would work better because it would get hotter. Well, it does, but just on the plastic itself, it doesn't have a tendency to create that greenhouse effect and heat the, you know, like superheat the air <laughs> and kill off the, the weeds. So in the future, we're gonna continue to use the clear plastic. Oh, it's so much fun to see that these trees are doing well. We used to water them when we'd plant new trees, but we found that they actually do quite a bit better. If we just plant them in the early spring, when the soil is still really moist, and we let them fend for themselves. It kind of reminds me of you know, how you're not supposed to, well, this one died, but 